right, today um, I'm going to be doing an unboxing of a ZX Spectrum Harlequin 1 to 8 kit I purchased from Bright Delight uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, in case you don't know, the ZX Spectrum Harlequin is a ZX Spectrum clone. There are two variants. There's the 48K, which I think is revision G, and the 1 to 8K, which is the one I've got here, which is a revision 2D board. Um, the Harlequin is based upon work by Chris Smith, who reverse engineered the Spectrum ULA and implemented it with discrete 74 series logic chips. Um, I'll post a link to the book he wrote about this in the comments, along with links to his website. So the ULA, it's a custom chip that was made specifically by Ferranti for Sinclair for the ZX81 and Spectrum. Um, I think they might have even done one for the QL. Prior to that, um, the ZX80 had no ULA. Um, it was all implemented with discrete logic chips. So in a way, this board probably has more in common with the design ethos of the ZX80 than the later Sinclair computers. Anyway, I waffle and I digress. So the kit comes with um, a couple of bags of discrete components. These seem to contain individually wrapped and labelled components. Um, let's open this one up a minute. Ah. So, it does look like they are individually numbered and bagged by component value. So here we got four BC548. Uh, in this bag here, the first one, Four no five diodes five one n four one four eight diodes. So hopefully that will make assembly a bit easier. Um, I should be able to locate them on the board without having to work out what the component values are and where they should go and so on and so forth. Very good. Uh, there's also a couple of. Get these out of the way. A couple of street waffles, so that's very good of bike lights to throw those in. Uh, based in the Netherlands, so I'm not surprised by this. Uh, the kit took about a week to get to me, which is quite good. There's a bag of chips, not literally a bag of chips, it's actually um, a bag of silicon chips. So uh, it looks like we have a Z80, that's an AY chip. I hazard a guess at those two are RAM chips here. Zoom in a little bit closer. Uh, and then we've got all these discrete logic chips. So many of these will be replacing the function of the ULA. 74 series logic chips. Um, there's a dip switch. I'll come on to that in a bit. Um, that's probably a voltage regulator there. Let's drop 9 volts down to 5 volts. And on the flip side, it's mostly sockets, which is good. I dislike soldering chips directly to the board, and it will make future maintenance a lot easier. Excellent. Let's put that to one side. Uh, some instructions. I've already read these instructions. They're very good. Um, the kit's aimed at folk who are comfortable with a soldering iron, but may not have assembled a complete board before. Um, I can't really show you any of the pages. There's a disclaimer with some copyright information at the top which I'm going to honour but needless to say it's an easy read with tips on component orientation so obviously some capacitors and diodes need to be assembled in the correct way um, the assembly sequence uh, which ties into um, the numbers on the bag type of solder to use which is quite important um, I would recommend actually uh, using 6040 solder I'm using, going to use one mil for this for through hole um, if you use leaded solder, mileage may vary. Un unleaded solder, I should say, mileage will vary. Um, I find it quite difficult to work with. Um, there's also schematics uh, and a complete bill of materials with part numbers um, included for Conrad and Farnell. So I'll put that over here in a minute. Oh, I'd better mention at this point that um, I'm not connected to Bike Delight in any way. Uh, nor am I being sponsored for this video. 
<coughs> the kit was purchased out of my own funds um, purely for my own pleasure. Uh, and these videos are for my own purposes and hopefully you will get some uh, value out of them as well. And here's the board. Let's open this one up. Right. Let's have a look at that. Zoom in a little bit. Turn it the right way, it helps. There we go. And the reverse. That really is a fingered beauty. So what's on here then? We have over here, near where my thumb is, a single surface mount chip. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that's for. Uh, possibly something to do with the video, don't know. But that's good news for anybody that's only done through hole soldering before. Um, there is a bit of a knack to, doing, uh, to soldering surface mount components. And it's printed on this rather gorgeous black PCB. I believe it's the same size as the Spectrum 48 one with the drill holes in the appropriate screw holes in the appropriate place for mounting. So it should fit well within a 48 Chaos Spectrum Plus case with no issues. And you can see that it's very well labelled. So all of the components, including the discrete components like the resistors and the diodes, are all marked on there. And if you look at the diodes in particular, it's even possible to work out the orientation just from looking at this. That is rather fetching. I'm not normally a fan of black PCBs because as you can see, it's difficult to work out the traces. Black on black. They tilt it, you might just see them in the light. Hmm. I'll put that back in here for the moment. You can purchase the boards direct from places like eBay or sell my retro. Um, I decided to go down the kit route as Bike Delight seemed to offer a pretty good deal. I think I paid about £85 including delivery to the UK. Um, Save me time for getting a bill of materials and ordering the components separately. I uh, started going down that route and I figured that, actually in fairness, it wasn't much cheaper. I think I worked out it was slightly more expensive because I was only buying one-offs of everything. There's a couple of things to note before I wrap up. The kit does not include a power supply, so you'll need a good 9 volt DC power supply. There's the same polarity as the Spectrum 48K power supply. Um, I think a Spectrum 48K supply will do the job, though, as it's unregulated and outputs about 13 to 14 volts with no load. I may go down the route of purchasing a regulator power supply for this, but for testing, I've got a lab power supply here which I can tune to 9 volts, and that will also give me an indication of how much power this board draws. It also doesn't include a case, keyboard, keyboard membrane, or rubber mat. You can buy these online for about £50 of worked out in total, or if you've got a suitable and a suitable donor machine that's not working, like a broken 48k or a Spectrum Plus, you can um, take the motherboard out, the broken motherboard out, and stick this in with no issues. There's obviously no ULA, uh, that's been engineered out of this and there's no, not required, surplus of requirements. But finally, there is one thing that you will need, there's no ROM. Um, I believe these are not supplied with the kit for copyright reasons. There are a couple of options here. You can either get a 48k or 128k ROM from a donor toast track or plus two or 48k machine. Or burn your own, use an EEPROM or an EEPROM. So there's a couple of EEPROM options. There's a 27C256, which is a 32k EEPROM. And that's sufficient to store the 48k, the 128k or a plus two ROM. Um, if you want to program up the plus 2A or the plus 3 ROM, you'll need a 27C5112, which is a 64K EEPROM. What I've actually gone for is a AM 29F040. Which I 
and get it out of the packet. So that's this fella here. Zoom in. Now these can be quite difficult to get hold of. I found a supplier on eBay that was selling them from around eight pounds, which seems like a lot, but it was a price I was prepared to pay. So I've gone down this option, uh, partly because it's a 512k EEPROM. I can store up to eight ROMs on there. Um, so that's eight banks of 64k, and those are selectable using the dip switch. So you can imagine that three position dip switch, there's eight unique positions that go in there. Um, I'm planning on programming up at least a 48k ROM and 128k ROM and possibly a diagnostic ROM just so that they can check it's all working correctly like a RAM test. Um, but that leaves me uh, five banks free so I might stick a plus two and a plus three ROM in there. Um, like I said, the ROMs are not supplied because of copyright reasons, so you will need to sort yourself out for that. Um, the other reason I've gone for the EE prom rather than the EEPROM is that EE proms, the extra E, it stands for electrically erasable, as opposed to just erasable e, uh, prom, which means that using my trusty TNI TL866 Plus programmer, this fella here, which I purchased a couple of years ago. Uh, not only can I burn the ROM from a ROM file, but I can erase it too. If you just go down the EEPROM route, you'll need uh, an EEPROM eraser, which uses a strong UV light. Uh, it takes quite a while, actually, to fully erase an EEPROM um, to uh, basically um, do the erasing process. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for the moment. So, thank you for watching. Uh...